Jess from Knockout Print Shop and today I have a video for you about menu planning or meal planning, whatever you want to call it. This is like the third time I filmed this video, so hopefully this works. So I want to share with you guys my experience of how my meal planning has evolved and improved as well as give you some tips or things that I think are essential to implementing in your meal planning process. So to give you a little backstory on me, I am a strength and health coach, owned a gym for you know like 10 years and I've been in the fitness industry for 15 years. So I have an extensive background in health and fitness. With that said, prior to about four years ago, I ate like okay. Definitely not horrible. I wasn't running out to fast food all the time, but I was still eating a lot of prepackaged and processed food and things that were easy and fast. And I was never really into cooking a lot. So I was eating okay, like average. Then if we fast forward to about four years ago, I um, started to really focus on improving my nutrition, eating better, and therefore improving my health. So I wanna share with you how that happened and how I use meal planning to do that and how that process evolved. So basically, it, didn't, it did not happen overnight. It took uh, Matt and I a few years to really get into a good habit of meal planning and really kind of refine our process and make it work for us um, in a kind of efficient, productive way. So the first thing we did was we started with dinner. So I think that if you were just starting meal planning or you feel like you suck at it, pick one meal to be your like focus. Don't try to plan breakfast, lunch, and dinner seven days a week right off the bat. It's gonna backfire. Pick one meal. So we picked dinner because obviously dinner tends to be the most invo the involved meal and usually needs a little bit more preparation. So we thought let's kind of get better at that, you know, planning, grocery shopping, prepping. That way we can transfer those skills to the easier meals and the meals that, you know, are not quite as involved. So we started off with dinners. The first thing we did was made sure that we planned which meals we were, or what nights a week we were eating out and how many of those times we were eating out a week. So for us, it was one time a week. We only eat out one time a week for kind of a date night, and that was typically Saturday. So on our menu or our planner, we would write out where the dinner spot was. So you wanna make sure even when you are eating out of the house that you note that in your menu planner so that helps again give you a full picture of the week when you're going through the planning process. The next thing we did is we started to implement the Service Blue Apron, which is one of those you know services that you get the you know three or so meals per week are all the ingredients and the recipes. So that really helped us get better at cooking and have three of our needed six meals or dinners per week already pre-planned. So we got our three Blue Apron meals, our one night out, so that left us with three more dinners to plan. And that really helped us kind of streamline the process and not feel so overwhelmed like, oh my God, we have to come up with six dinners and we don't even know where to start. Now we did Blue Apron for about, I would say a year or so, and it really worked well for us. It was in our budget and it was something we could do for a while. But then we hit a point where we're like, we have an accumulated, we've accumulated a bunch of recipes that we really like. So let's just try to save some money. Let's stop the service and just recreate all of these Blue Apron meals that we like and then sprinkle in some other things that we've tried or found or done over the years. So this whole process, I think of dinner, took us a, you know, a handful of months and basically by like six months to a year, we had like dinners mastered. We were, you know, we had our one day we could plan, we plan on our dinners and then we would eat them all, obviously. So we were wasting less food, saving money and eating better because we were again eating more whole foods versus processed foods. Once we got dinners down, we moved on to breakfast. Again, start with one meal per day, plan that guy out. Once that gets automated, move on to another meal. For whatever reason, we picked breakfast next. For us, it seemed like the logical next thing. I'm not sure why, but we did. And breakfast was fairly easy because we almost eat the same thing every single day. Um, it varies between eggs. At the time, we are eating a lot of avocado toast. I don't eat that now, but we mostly eat eggs, sometimes bacon or sausage, we eat yogurt. Our breakfast is pretty much the same, but even though it's the same, we still write it on our menu every single week. So if you, when I show you what our meal plan looks like, you're gonna see Monday through Sunday, it'll say eggs, 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 maybe bacon, sausage, whatnot. And the point of that is we know how many eggs you know we need and 
how many eggs we eat a day. So we each eat three eggs every morning. So we need six eggs a day. We eat a lot of eggs. And then we're like, okay, we need this many dozen of eggs. And then if there's other recipes that involve eggs, then we can add more to that. And that way we know we're not hitting Wednesday or Thursday and like, oh crap, we don't have enough eggs for breakfast now. We're not eating or eating something that's convenience based. So we did breakfast. Breakfast again was fairly easy um, to master and get you know, kind of under our belt and tweaked out. So we had our dinners fixed, you know, as part of our automated menu planning thing, we got our breakfast and then we attacked lunch last and lunch was always the hardest one for us. We just found ourselves more likely, you know, more days than not, like calling up Jimmy John's, running out to like, uh, you know, something in that Jimmy John's Panera realm and spending more money than we'd like to. And while those are not in the realm of fast food, the worst ones you can get, they're still not as nourishing as they could be. And so we wanted to save money, we wanted to eat better. So then we attacked lunches. The other problem with lunches, which I'm sure you can relate to whether you work from home or in an office, is sometimes you're like working, 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 and you don't want to stop to eat because, you know, we're all just, I don't know why we're wired that way. So we had to really work on going, okay, we're starting to get hungry, let's stop and go make lunch. Because we work from home, we're also able to basically make full on meals, which is different than I know someone that's working in an office or something like that. So we started to basically make our Blue Apron dinners for lunch as well. So again, it took a lot more time, but then we knew we were dedicating that time to cooking and eating that meal and taking that break. And there was days it was frustrating, but we did it anyways because we knew that it was the best option for us. So again, we had our dinners down, we had our breakfast down, and we were slowly but surely getting better and better at lunches. And we didn't do it perfect. There was definitely days where we had something on the menu, but we're like, oh, we don't feel like cooking, we waited too long, we're hungry. Now we're either grabbing at some extra little things we had in the fridge or we're still going to Jimmy John's. So lunch was difficult for us. It took us months to get that one like down to a science. We started to do things where we were cooking a little bit more dinner, so that would be leftovers for lunch, and that definitely helped. So, you know, maybe we're having tacos Monday night, and we cook more meat so that we could have it for Tuesday for lunch, and doing that as many dinners as we could, and then sprinkling in um, for lunch when we did have leftovers, maybe something like a burger or something else that was quicker. So lunches, again, just took us a longer time to master, but over the course of a couple of years, we started to get this process down to a science. We have our day that we sit down in the kitchen with our menu planner and we go through our process that I'm gonna share you with you here in a second. And we, you know, write down breakfast, write down lunches, write down dinners, write down the days that we're gonna eat out. And we have this whole plan. Now, even though we have the plan, sometimes things change. Like we're like, oh, we don't really feel like fish tonight. Let's do the burgers tonight. We'll do the fish tomorrow. So our plan is still flexible if we, you know, preferences change or something like that. We do our best to have things that are frozen, defrosted and things, you know, like that sometimes that just doesn't happen. We're like, oh, we're supposed to have fish tonight. Shoot, we didn't take it out. So what do we still have that's thawed? Okay, ground beef, we're doing tacos or something like that. So you still need to have room for flexibility in your meal plan, but you still need to have that structure there that then you can play with. So again, this process took us a long time. It wasn't perfect, we made mistakes, we learned a lot, we streamlined things, we learned to bulk cook a little bit, we had our go-to recipes that we kind of hit like every single week, which really helped, and we only allowed ourselves to make one new thing per week once we were off Blue Apron. Um, that way we weren't as overwhelmed, because when you know when you make a new recipe, it just doesn't, you're not efficient at it, you're trying to learn it, it's a little bit more overwhelming, takes more brain power. If you do that multiple times a week and you're not in a space if you always want to learn how to make new things, it's gonna be overwhelming, it's gonna discourage you, it's gonna prevent you from cooking in a habitual way. So I would highly recommend introducing only one uh, new recipe a week. So again, this process takes a little while, but you have to stick with it and know every week it's gonna get a little bit easier and you're gonna hone, refine, and tweak it to you and for your lifestyle so that it works better. So when it comes to the actual menu planning process, um, I created our menu planner worksheet kind of based on our process. You don't have to use this. You can use a notebook, a piece of paper, whatever you have. Uh, your planner will work just fine. But this is little worksheet kind of walks you through what our process is. So I'm gonna kind of use this as a guide um, to help you understand our process and hopefully these basics and essentials are things you can then integrate um, into your weekly menu planning to help you master this skill, which I think is essential if you're trying to improve your health. You have, 
meal planning is essential. So let's kind of figure out, map out how to make this easier and kind of mastering each one of these components will help you get there. So first things first, if you're using something undated, like a notebook or this worksheet, you're gonna write down the week or the dates on the sheet. If you're using your planner, that's already built in. The next thing you wanna do is go in and plug in the days you're gonna eat out. Now, we literally, like I said before, physically write out on the meals in that box that we're gonna be eating away from home. That way we know to plan around them and to make other meals according to when we're going out, when we do and don't need leftovers, things like that. So it's very key to do your best to start planning your meals out. It's okay to eat out, and obviously we wanna reduce eating out as much as possible, but the more you can plan those eating out experiences, the better you can plan your in-home experiences and you can start to move away from eating out so much. But when you just are doing your you know, eating out times based on convenience, again, it's gonna become like this snowball of eating out more and more and more and getting not any better at planning. So plug in those eating out experiences or times in your planner. Then you obviously wanna go from there and pick, you know, count up how many meals do you need. So if you need six meals, you're gonna kinda of have to come up with six ideas. If you only need five meals, come up with five meal ideas. So knowing which ones are not important to plan because you're gonna be eating away and how many you need to plan for because you're gonna eat and be cooking and eating at home. Obviously, when you're first starting this, I don't suggest that you cook or you plan all 21 meals, three meals a day, seven days a week, right off the bat. If you're new to this experience, trying to do that is going to be daunting, overwhelming, and you're not going to stick with it. Usually, starting with dinner is what most people do, and then building from there. Let's say you plan no meals right now per week. Even starting with planning one dinner per week is going to help. And then maybe next week you do two dinners. Really, truly, baby steps are the key to doing this. There's no rush, you will get there. Just take your time to build on these steps and these positive experiences. So once you have your number of meals out, your number of meals in, the next thing you wanna do is come up with some meal ideas. So we typically kind of write down things that we like, we write down our go-to recipes, if there's a new one we wanna try, things we have a taste for. You could even leave a notebook or something like this out on your kitchen counter so when you or a family member is like, oh, I really feel like, um, you know, tacos today. I keep using that. Clearly I want tacos. So they can kind of participate in that and you can have some running ideas of what you might cook that coming week. Having a meal idea section is huge. It just kind of allows you to brain dump ideas. The other thing you want to note is things that are happening in your week that are gonna impact your cooking and your eating experience. Maybe you are working late one night or your kids have a sporting event on a weekend day or you have a class late or you're going out for a eating you know, a business dinner or something. You wanna note those things, whether you just have your planner out so you can see that while you're meal planning or you physically write that in a meal planning worksheet like this. That way you know, okay, so this day I don't need leftovers or maybe I should have this meal this day because I'm eating out lunch the next day, so I'm not gonna need leftovers. Things like that's gonna help you be more strategic about this process versus going like, I think I want tacos, I think I want pasta, I think I want lasagna. That way you have a you're attacking this very strategically. Once you have your ideas and you have those notes down, the next thing you wanna do is kinda of like shop your kitchen. So you wanna do an inventory of your pantry and your fridge slash freezer. Now this doesn't have to be something that you're like going into and noting every single thing that you have in there from like the little bit of mustard you have left to whatever meat you have left. You wanna go and look at what do you need, like what staples do you have? What vegetables do you have left that you wanna to get to before they go bad? Do you have any frozen meats or things that you need to get to? Do you have any dried goods like rice and things like that that you can use up so you're not having to purchase more things. That way between your meal ideas and your inventory, you can kind of craft a meal plan that saves you money, uses the food that you have so you're not wasting money, and again, is more strategic. So when you're shopping and when you're eating, you're being as efficient as possible. From there is when you clearly set your meals. So you go through on your calendar, whether it's something like this, your planner or notebook, and you're writing out Monday through Sunday, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, kind of making this chart, if you're again just using a plain notebook, and plugging all these meals in based on all of those elements, your inventory of your kitchen, your um, schedule that week, and your meal ideas. And so that way, every little piece is kind of working together. Now you're gonna screw this up a bunch of times and it's gonna be hard, it's gonna be overwhelming, you're gonna get annoyed and frustrated, 
but that's okay. Do the best that you can, and again, every week it'll get easier. This took Matt and I weeks and months and years to get right. It seems silly, but it does take a long time to really get in a habit, get those go-to recipes, figure out what the best meal planning day for you is, the best grocery shopping day, where to go to grocery stores are. There's a lot, of, it seems like it should be easy, but there's actually a lot of elements to this process and a lot of little pieces that you have to master and integrate to really truly be efficient at meal planning. So be patient with yourself, start one meal at a time, take your time and do what you can. Um, that is our process. Again, you don't need to use something like our meal plan insert. You can do this in a calendar. You can do this in a notebook. I highly recommend getting your family involved as much as you can, kids, spouses, things like that, so that you can have them participating in the meal planning process, get them involved in the cooking process. Really cooking and meal planning is supposed to be about connection, not only with your food, but with the people in your life. So the more they can get involved and be part of this process, and enjoy it with you and kind of take ownership of it, the easier it's going to get. Um, we don't always like meal planning. Like sometimes we get frustrated, like, oh my gosh, you know, we go on Thursdays or like it's Wednesday night, we're like, oh, we don't feel like meal planning, but if we don't do it now, we have to do it in the morning and that's gonna kind of screw up our day. And sometimes we wait till the morning and then we're frustrated and kind of arguing with each other because we're like, oh, we don't feel like doing this. It's a process. Not every day that you meal plan is gonna be fun. Not every day is gonna be easy. Um, you're gonna make meals that suck. You're gonna ruin meals. Um, you're gonna forget food that's supposed to be taken out of the freezer. Again, it's a process. And just do the best you can. Create a meal plan and then create a grocery list that allows you to go and shop for the foods that you need so you can have that food in your home so you're ready to make it. And then obviously the last step from that would be to really get good at um, preparing yourself. So a lot of times it's easy to you know, work too long and be starving and go for convenience food or just go out with friends to dinner and things like that. So that part is like another piece of this process that takes you know, more practice and discipline and habits to be integrated to really master the actual execution of the meal plan. You just start with planning the meals first. So I hope you guys found that helpful, just pulling out the things that I think are essential to mastering meal planning and sharing with you our process. I just wanted to kind of illustrate that this does take a while to master. Do not expect yourself to get it right, right away, and to never be frustrating because it can be a challenging process. So let me know what you guys think of meal planning. Are you already meal planning? Do these tips help? How do you meal plan? Let me know if you have questions or comments below, and I will see you in the next video.